sit upon the ground and they keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. Mm -hmm. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. Mm -hmm. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mm -hmm. My eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. Mm -hmm. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mm -hmm. Because the children and the sucklings swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? Mm -hmm. What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? He said, What thing shall I liken unto thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? Mm -hmm. For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. He said, thy prophets have what? Seen vain and foolish things for thee. Uh-oh. So he said, the prophets, they saw vain and foolish things for thee. Right? What is vain? Emptiness. Emptiness. Yeah. They saw stuff that was empty. And it was foolish for thee. Grab, uh, grab Jeremiah chapter uh, 28 or 29. Give me 29. Let's try 29 first. It's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1. He said, hey, thy prophets, they saw vain and foolish things. What do you think going on right now? You got everybody calling this up. Brother 
brother was just over here, what was that, third, the other night? You know what I'm saying? Wednesday night. You know what I'm saying? Brother was just over here. He is like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Talking about, you know, experience that he had, you know what I'm saying? Something he ran into. He's talking about, yeah, the, you know what I'm saying? The brother called himself an apostle. You know what I'm saying? He called himself an apostle. He's a pastor of a church. He called himself an apostle. Like, all right. You know what I'm saying? You got people calling themselves apostles, prophets. You know what they call, you know what they tell the people? God going to break the chain. Right? God going to lift the yoke off of your neck. He going to take you away from your suffering. Right? Your breakthrough is around the corner. Right? That's what the brothers are telling them. And they tell them as apostles and as prophets. They, pre they present themselves as prophets. So when people hear those glorious words and those good things from somebody who calls themselves a prophet, prophet we're going to believe it. We're going to go with it. Who don't want to take some good news? Right? We're going to go with it. Don't matter. It's not true. And that's what, that's what we're reading about. What Jeremiah talking about lamentation. He's like, man, your prophets, they prophesy vain and foolish things. It's Jeremiah chapter uh, chapter 29, verse 1. Uh, what does it start with? Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the people. Give me 28 then. You want Hananiah? When he was prophesying that crazy stuff? Yeah. All right. That's 29 or 28? 28. 28. So that's 28, verse 1. And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all of the people, saying, uh -huh. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Look, it's the prophet, the prophet coming back. He said, remember, our people are in turmoil right now. All we've been hearing is God going to take us down. He's going to bring uh, Babylon through and take us out of our land. All these things, right? We've been hearing a whole bunch of bad news. Then he come along and said, listen, the Most High God told me that he broke Babylon right on down. We are all right, y'all. Keep going. Watch this. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. He said, in two years, all the stuff that's been stolen from us is coming on back. Good news. We like that. Keep going. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, says the Lord. He said, the Lord told me, all the people that were taken away captive into Babylon so far, all of them in two years is coming back. Good news. We rock with that. Let's hear about it. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and of the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. He said, Amen with Jeremiah. Jeremiah heard all this good news. Jeremiah said, Amen. Right? Amen. What else? The Lord do so. He said, I hope God do exactly what you said he's going to do. But the Lord perform thy words which you have prophesied to bring again the vessel of the Lord's house uh -huh. and all that is carried away captive uh -huh. from Babylon into this place. Okay. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in your ears and he in said, the ears of all the people. He said, okay, I hope that happens. Nevertheless, though, let's hear the word that I'm talking about. Right? I hear from the Most High God. Let me tell you what he told me. Right? Let's hear about it. The prophets, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. He said, the prophets of old, they prophesied against many countries. And what? And against great kingdoms. And against great kingdoms. They weren't talking to their friends. They weren't talking to members of their church. He said, the prophets of old, the real prophets, the ones that confirmed. They were talking to many countries. They went up to kings talking this stuff. And what were they talking about? They were talking about the king going to have a, a more rich kingdom. Of war. He said they talking about war. And of evil. And of evil. And of pestilence. And of pestilence. He going to kings, he said. You a prophet. He said, I don't know about you. I'm just talking about the prophets that's confirmed. They went to kings talking about, oh yeah, yo, you about to go into war. Your whole kingdom about to get taken down. Right? It's about to be all types of disaster. It's about to be a famine on your land. That's what our confirmed prophets did. 
right? But as he was there, Jeremiah, Jeremiah doesn't even think about it. I mean, you were coming with a whole lot of good news. Mm-hmm. The prophets, I remember, they came with the bad news. But, let's hear Jeremiah is a fair man. Let's hear about it. The, prophets, the prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. He said, we know. If you tell them, you tell them us peace, you tell them us that God got a breakthrough around the corner, you tell them us, you tell them us that the change is, is, is the yoke is going to come up off me and the change is going to fall off me and, and, and God is going to multiply me and all these different things that these pastors tell us. If you telling me that, according to Jeremiah, we should believe you a prophet after it happened. Now, if you coming to me like the rest of the prophets, and you talking to kingdoms and countries, and you talking about war and pestilence, right? Well, that's something different. Ain't no different with y'all sure. That's something different. But why you say that? Ain't nobody believe y'all sure. He came in speaking peace, and good news. They still don't. And we still don't believe because it ain't happened. But when it happened, just like he said, that's when you know the Lord of hosts has sent me when I do all these things, right? And even if you're talking about Yahweh Shua, what else he come talking about? War and pestilence. <laughs> what is it? Prophets, you tell me they don't break no rules? What's wrong with y'all? These people, they ain't on top of this stuff. They got a book to fulfill. You know what I'm saying? Grab, uh, grab Deuteronomy, what I want, 13? Is that what I want? Give me Deuteronomy 18. Give me verse... Oh, 18, 18, 18. Is that what I want? Yeah, maybe a little, like a few verses after that, but yeah. All right, it's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I might want 13 too. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. He said they're going to raise up what? Prophet from among their brethren. Most like God said he raising up a prophet from among the brethren. Like unto thee. Like unto Moses. When he say thee, he talking about Moses. He said, I'm raising up one. He gonna, he gonna be just like Moses. Let's hear about it. And will put my words in his mouth. Uh-huh. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, uh -huh. I will require it of him. Mm. You see, Yahweh Shua was a prophet. That's what this talking about. That's talking about Yahweh talking about Jesus. Alright? He is a prophet. Alright? What you think he's gonna come talking about all this all this peace? You know they you know they they he said, I didn't come for peace. What did he say he came for? He came for war. He said, I came for the sword. Yeah. He thought this boy, he said, I didn't come for peace. Because he's a prophet. He couldn't just come here telling tell people peace. If he did, he wouldn't expect nobody to believe him. When he was talking about peace, just like the brother said, and it wasn't nobody believing. I don't rock with that. That don't make no sense. We set up to believe. We'll believe you after it happened. You come warn me about something, I'll take some heed to that. I'll relax. You know what I'm saying? And you come talk about everything all right? Okay, we'll see. That's just dark nature. That's how we're supposed to do it. We look, I mean, that's our attitude now. Right? A lot of people come up to us talking about, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, this is good. No, it's all right. Let's unity, right? Yeah, unity. We always skeptical. We be looking like, right, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what's happening here. You know what I'm saying? We, we went to a walk. We went to a walk yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Peace and love and unity and this, that, nothing. And I appreciate the brother. You know what I'm saying? I see what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But at the same time, for the time, I'm like this. they like, everybody, black power, put your fist in the air. I'm like, I ain't putting my fist in the air. Hi. I'll stand here next to you now. I ain't, gonna, I ain't putting my fist in the air. That's crazy. Because now I'm, a, I'm skeptical. You know what I'm saying? You can talk about peace and love and unity. I'm like, mm, I don't know. They ain't a prophet. Prophets I can't talk about, they gonna sit in the middle of the floor and be like, you know what? It's about to go down, y'all. These white folks about to kill us. Now, I can work with that. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, my hand. That's what I'm telling the truth here. Because that's something I can, I can identify with. That's a warning. That's something. You can do something with that type of information. If somebody telling you that something negative is going to happen to you, this is what you need to do to avoid it, that's valuable. If you tell me, oh, everything's about to be peachy with you in a couple days. I, cool. I can't wait for a couple days. Right now, it ain't peachy, though. Right? That's just our attitude as Hebrews. That's our culture. That's how we look at stuff. Right? Keep going. Let's see what else we're working with here. It's Deuteronomy chapter 18. What verse we leave off on? We're not trying to figure 
Yeah, he was mad. Yeah, he was mad. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name. He said, the prophet which shall presume. In other words, he doing this thing on his own. He, he opened up his mouth and he talking like he's speaking from my name. Which I have not commanded him to speak. He said, remember, this is our law we read. He said, and I have not commanded him to speak. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Uh huh. Even that prophet shall die. That prophet is gone. That's it. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know? He said, if thou shalt say in thy heart, how am I going to know God? God told you if a prophet come running the darn mouth and he ain't speaking up for me, oh, that prophet going to die. So naturally, you know what our question going to be? How are we supposed to know if he's speaking up for you or not? How are we going to know if this is God talking or if this is just some fool presuming? He said, if you say in your heart, how shall we know? Let's hear about it. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? I have no idea what he's going to say right here. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that thing, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. That got that. Where do you think, Jeremiah? See, the, the point, we don't know the law. This is our law that we read right now. We don't know the law. So when we read Jeremiah, Jeremiah like, listen, if you come to me talking about love, peace, unity, right? And everything going to be okay. You going to be known as a prophet only after what you said comes to pass. That's exactly what our law tells us to do. We're not doing nothing different. Jeremiah and I, he's not swaying from the past. That's why in Lamentations when he was talking, he said, listen, your prophets, they prophesy vain things and foolish things. Them boys don't know what they darn talking. Because he was reflecting on the fact I just told Hananiah that this thing was about to go south. I told Hananiah. Hananiah did not listen. He talked about two years and look where we are now. My people done been slaughtered. They believe these darn prophets. If they would have listened to what God told me, we would have been A-OK. -okay. The people ain't got a heart to listen though. That's why we here. Right? That's why we here to learn the law, to learn the word, and to make sure that we got a heart to listen. And make sure we got a heart to obey. And make sure we got a heart to hear. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I think that's where we left off. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, give me verse 1. Y'all not excuse me. I'm doing the thing that I want to know. When all these things are come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessing and the curse, uh -huh. which I have set before thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations. We read this already, right? Uh -huh. You sure? No. Before we leave off last, uh, not last week, the week before last. 29, 29. Alright. 29, 20. Okay. And it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. when all these things are come upon thee, and the blessing and the curse, which mm -hmm. I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations, whether the Lord thy God is driven thee, mm -hmm. and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. I appreciate it, most That I will thy children, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, where the Lord God has scattered thee. You have to understand, he's talking to us right now. Yeah, I mean, you got to like, like understand like the weight of what's happening right now. So this is the law. This is before we even set foot in the land as a nation. We haven't set foot in our land as a nation yet. And the man already ran down. Y'all gonna get in the land. Y'all gonna get kicked out 
outer land, y'all gonna be sent into captivity, and I'm still gonna bring y'all back into the land. Okay. From that point, he spoke about four thousand years, but three, three, four thousand years ahead. Like he just ran it down. Like these are all, this is all the stuff you gonna go through. And at the very end, I'm still bringing you back. And that's what's approaching for us. Keep going, march it. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, uh -huh. from there will the Lord God gather thee, and from there will he fetch thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Nobody's getting missed. And when I say that, be very clear about what I mean. Anybody who got scattered out is getting come, coming back. But not everybody who got scattered out is getting get, 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 get brought back. Alright? Some people are going to get rejected. Grab, uh, what is that, Ezekiel 30? Or 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, give me verse 20. Oh, 2020, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right? He gonna bring us back into the land. All right? He gonna bring us back, and he let us know, even before we step foot in the land, he let us know, you gonna get in the land, you gonna mess up, I'm gonna punish you, I'm gonna scatter your butt, and I'm gonna bring you back to the land. Just be ready for it. He said, I don't care how far off you was, how far you got scattered to what land you got scattered to, your butt's going to be brought back. Right? And that's the attitude that we got to have when we walk. But not everybody's going back. A lot of people going to be thinking they're going back. A lot of people going to be on their way back. But not everybody's staying. Right? This is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. Watch what he said. Hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. Mm -hmm. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them. Which if a man do, he shall live in them. He said, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Keep going. They polluted my Sabbaths. Uh -huh. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them uh -huh. to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand. And rock for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. Uh huh. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries. Uh huh. Because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths. That's verse 20. Yeah. The new one is like further down. What are we looking at? Any verse 20? What's the last verse? 49. Alright, give me verse 30. Hold on. Wait a okay, wherefore say unto the house of Israel, the Son of Lord, are you polluted after the manner of your fathers? No. Okay, hold on. You want 33, bro. 33? So this is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Uh -huh. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I, I will, there will I plead with you face to face. Right? So he's telling us all the way from Deuteronomy the same thing that we learned about, you know, years later from Ezekiel. <laughs> Ezekiel just reiterating what's in our law. This is the this is what people miss. You you don't get our law. You don't understand our law. You don't read our law. You miss what all the prophets are talking about. But like all the prophets is tying back to the law. All the New Testament is tying back to our law. You just kind of remove yourself from a, a strong foundation by doing that. All right? So Ezekiel is now kind of telling us the same thing. But look at the additional context that Ezekiel is going to have. We read Deuteronomy, we had we'd be under the impression. Everybody who gets scattered, all their descendants, all their butts coming back. Why would Ezekiel tell? 
He's like, yes yeah, and no, watch this. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. So he said, all the places where he scattered us, he's then going to bring us all back, or bring us all into the wilderness. He said, once you get to the wilderness, there I'm going to plead with you face to face. Right? I'm talking to you face to face, and I'm making a case with you face to face. Watch this. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord God. Uh huh. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into, I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. He said, I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Mmm. We gotta come back here. Grab a, grab a. Grab Matthew. Hold what we got here. Go Math Matthew chapter 25. We just gonna do a little bit of talking tonight. It's Matthew chapter 25. I'm just gonna go to Israel. Let's say verse 25 too. I feel like that's what it really is, but we'll see. Matthew chapter 25, verse 25. shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory mm -hmm. and before him shall he gather all nations okay shall be gathered all nations okay and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats so as a shepherd divides sheep from goats he gonna divide the nations one from another all right well, well how are you gonna do that let's hear about it and he shall set up the sheep on the right hand but the goats on the left so then he's going to have sheep on the right hand and the goats are going to be on the left. Let's hear about it. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. Uh -huh. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. Uh -huh. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Uh -huh. Naked, and ye clothed me. Uh -huh. I was sick, and ye visited me. Uh -huh. I was in the prison, and ye came unto me. Uh -huh. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee? or thirsty, and gave thee drink. When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or uh -huh. naked, and clothed thee? Uh-huh. Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? Uh-huh. And the kings... Look, so you know, this is where people, remember we were talking about how Christian try to tell you that, you know, just any old crack, any old crackhead can be Jesus. Right? This is where they get it from. Because they, they ask, but he is like, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, Right? You helped me out. You looked after me when I was in prison. You came to visit me. Right? So, then, the disciples asked, they're like, well, when did we do that? Right? Watch what his answer is. Y'all sure going to tell him. This is when you did it. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye had done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. Least of these my who? Brethren. Oh, okay. Ye have done it unto me. So, that got that. Right? He's not talking about any old random crackhead that's hungry. You give him some food, you feeding y'all sure. Nah, 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 nah. nah, you can't go with that. He said, if you did it to the least of these, my brother. Y'all sure told us, what did, what, how do you describe a brother, a sister, or a mother of y'all sure? Those that keep the word of the Father. Those who hear the word and do the will of his Father. That's his sister, his brother. So now, if you're talking about the least of these, my brethren, he's saying the least of the one, the man who faithfully obey God, but he hungry. When you fed him, that's when the Most High God said, okay, you fed me. You fed his body. Yeah. Right? They try to mystify this stuff and make stuff look all like, oh, well, you know what? You can't judge nobody. That's not what the book is saying. The book says judge. Why? Don't be foolish out here in these streets. 
You know what I'm saying? You feed the only person if you want to. Just don't try to make yourself feel like you feeding God when you do it. You feed, you know what I'm saying? You feed, you feed, you know what I'm saying? Feed you a crackhead. I ain't saying don't feed them. That's, that's all I like to feed them. You know what I'm saying? I forgot some ones food the other day. I definitely didn't say I was feeding God. All right? I was feeding the crackhead. All right? I was feeding some man that was down on his luck. I was feeding some man that maybe made some bad decisions. I was feeding some man who had the system up against him, and maybe he made all the right decisions. That thing just didn't work out for him. So he turned another way. You know what I mean? Definitely wasn't feeding God. I'm feeding God when I feed my brother. Right? When I feed y'all, that will obey God. You know what I'm saying? That's when, that's when we're feeding God. That's when we're feeding y'all, sure. The rest of this stuff, man, you know what I'm saying? Let these people confuse us and make us feel like, you know what I'm saying? Let these spring voodoo on our brains and all the crazy stuff they be trying to get us to think. Right? He said, the least of these, my brother. But what do you say to those on the left? Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I got that. Your boy on the left, bye. You know what I'm saying? And he separated them, right? Let's go back. This is Ezekiel chapter 20. What verse we leave off on? Uh, 37. So this is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37. He said he's going to pass them under the rod. And bring him into the bond. Yahushua said he going to divide the, the goats from the sheep like a man, like a shepherd. You know what a shepherd usually has in his hand? A rod. A rod. He usually got a stick. I want a rod here. You know what I'm saying? Like he usually got a stick. And Ezekiel said he going to make him pass under the rod. I wonder what he's talking about. Let's see. It's Ezekiel. Chapter 20, verse 37. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37. Mm. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Mm. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. He said, then I'm going to purge out the rebels. That sounds just like what y'all are talking about. I got my sheep on this side, but on my left hand side, bye. Get your butt out of here. Grab a Give me Genesis. Jacob. Yeah, where is that? Genesis 28? Oh, so it's 30. Uh, it might be 30, though. Let's see what 28 say. It ain't 26. I want to say 26. So if it ain't 28, we're going to try 36. And I think both of those are going to It's Genesis. We're going to hold we got in Ezekiel. We're still coming back there. But we're going to go to Genesis. Chapter 28. I don't think it's 36. It can't be that far out. Mm -hmm. I think it's 30. I think it's 30. What 36? 38. 31. It's 31. Because that's after he fled from Laban, right? No, that was right before he fled from Laban. What 28 is that? 28 is. Isaac told Jacob not to get another daughter's king. And then Jacob, Jacob had that dream in Bethlehem. So it is 30. Yeah. 30 like 20? Did I give my wives and my children? It might be before that. Yeah, it might be before that. Yeah. That's 20? Yeah, that's 30, 20, yeah. So it's probably like 29 or something. Yahushua said, on my right hand side, I want my sheep. 
On the left hand side, I want the goats. The sheep, since y'all fed me, since y'all looked after me when I was sick, since y'all visited me in prison, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get to be on my right hand side. They said, when did we do that? He is like, man, when you did it for the least of these, my brother, that's when you did it for me. Right? So he put him on the right hand side. He said, everybody on my left hand side, though, bye. You go into the everlasting fire, the fire that never quench. Right? You go into the everlasting fire. Then we read in Ezekiel. Ezekiel say, I'm going to put my rod out. I'm going to put my staff out. And they're going to pass under the bomb. Y'all, she would say, I'm going to separate them like a shepherd do it. Shepherd always got a staff. Right? Now we're about to read about Jacob. This is Jacob. This is Genesis chapter, uh, this is Genesis chapter 30, verse what? 31. Verse 31? This is Genesis chapter 30, verse 31. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. Uh -huh. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted cattle, uh -huh. and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. Mm -hmm. And of such shall be my hire. Mm -hmm. So shall my righteousness answer for me in, thy, in time to come. He said he's going to take all the ones that are speckled and spotted. Righteousness going to answer for me in time to come. Do you understand that? He's taking the ones that are speckled and spotted. All the ones that look presentable, the ones that look nice. You can have those. Give me the ones that don't that people don't like. Give me the ones that's rejected. What do you think they're talking about? And my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. What do you think Yahushua is doing? When he say I'm looking for the one that can confess his sin. I'm looking for the one that's downtrodden. He said, I'm looking for the rejected. I'm looking for the one that's speckled and spotted. Why do you think that's, that's, part of, that's part of what we got to do? We got to confess our sins to the most our God. That's a speck. That's a spot. We admitting that we, we dirty. We unclean. We blemished. That's the one y'all sure say he won. When he separated, what do you think he separated? Go ahead and give you the speckled sheep. Just like Jacob did. Alright, go ahead and give me the speckle sheet. That's something I can work with. When y'all show up, when y'all. Alright. When we read in the law a couple weeks ago, it was a couple things that couldn't enter into the congregation of the Most High God. Who remembers some of them? Canaanite. It was a Canaanite. But it was some that was a unit. Right? You couldn't enter in. Right? What if you were blind? Blind and lame. Your brother couldn't enter in. Right? You couldn't go into the congregation. You can still be in the camp. You still with us. Right? But if you blind, you can't get in. So when Yahushua came, he was talking. This is this is uh John chapter 9. We ain't gotta get it though. But he was talking to the Pharisees. And he said, These folks are blind. And the Pharisee came back and they're like, You trying to call us blind? He was like, <laughs> if you was blind, you would be alright. But since you say you see, your sin remains. Because the Pharisees is looking at it like, you can't be accepted by God if you're blind. Because that's our law. Y'all, she would say, give me the ones that's messed up. You tell me you're blind. I'm going to make it so that you see. I'm going to make you old. I'm going to clean you up. You're going to be all right when I get done. You'll be accepted. You give me the ones that speckled and spotted. That's what Jacob said. Give me the speckled and spotted ones. You keep the ones without a blemish. And at the end of the day, my righteousness will answer for me. In other words, at the end of the day, the Most High God is going to look at what I'm doing is favorable. And he's going to be able to prove out through what I'm doing that this is the righteous thing to do. Let's keep going. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. Uh -huh. When it shall come from my hire before thy face. Uh -huh. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. He said, if I have anything that's not speckled, if I have anything that's just a clean sheep, you can count that as stolen. You can say I stole that from you. Because I'm only taking the ones that's special. Anything
get yelled at the ball, you can have it. You can say, I stole that thing from you. Let's see, keep going. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. You say, I like that plan. Laban like, that's how you want to do it? Laban said, Okay, I like that plan. Go ahead. He goes, Let it be according to your words. Let's see. And he removed that day that he goats that were rain sacked. Rain sacked just mean, it mean they have blemishes on them. Rain stracked and spotted. And all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and everyone that had some white in it. And all and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Right. And he set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Right. So look at what Laban did. So Laban, this is an agreement between two men, right? Terrence and Jacob, I'm late. Terrence tells me, Terrence said, you know what? Listen, I want out of this bad contract that you got me in. He wanted to marry two of my daughters, or he wanted to marry one of my daughters. I tricked him into wearing the one first. Now I was like, oh, you wanted the other one. See, in our land, you have to marry the oldest daughter first. But I tell you what, work for me seven more years, and you can have the youngest daughter too. Right? So he got him in there, got him in for 14 years. He finished his 14 years. He was like, listen, I did that. I'm ready to go. Let me go. They been like, man, you can't just throw up out of here. What you doing? So I'm tripping with him. I'm like, no, you can't just leave. So they had the last resort. He said, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You like the way I treat you. And that's what I like him for. Right? He, he, you know what I'm saying? He take care of my animals. My animals real productive around. They keep multiplying. I'm a rich man behind what he do on my animals. So that's money walking out the door if he leave for me. So I wasn't like, no, you can't leave. I need you here, and these is my daughter. I love my daughter. Uh, you got to relax. So he like, I right, tell you what, I will keep your animals. Not only will I keep your animals, for my hire, for what you owe me, you ain't got to give me nothing. Just give me all the animals that are rejected amongst you, the ones you don't even want anyway. So Laban was like, well, that makes sense. You're going to keep them. You're going to let them grow up, make sure they're good for a period of time. And then I get the good ones, and you get the bad ones. Laban like, that's a good deal. Let it be just like you say. Right? So after they make that deal, Laban immediately goes to all his animals and he takes all the ones that would be Terrence, it would be Jacob's, and he splits those off and hides those. Right? So imagine like 10% of his flock was speckled and spotted and all that. Right? That automatically would have went to T. So what I did is I said, okay, Give me that 10% before T even know about it. Let's take them out of the mix. And they still mine. Right? Then we just going to give him all the ones that are clean. So what does that do for me? That means that every single animal I give him, he going to have to take care of for this period of time. He's already good with the animals. So this is a win, win, win for me. So I cheated the man. Right? Watch how God do And he removed that day the he goats that were ring sack and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Mm -hmm. And he set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Mm -hmm. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar. He said he took what? Rods of green poplar. Didn't didn't the Most High when we was reading Ezekiel? Didn't he say I'm gonna bring them into the wilderness, and I'm gonna bring them under the what? He said, I'm going to bring him under the rod. And then at that point, what is he going to do to us? Purge out the rebels. He's going to bring us in under the bond, and then he's going to purge out the rebels. So some of us are going to be put under the bond, his right hand. Then the rebel going to be put on the left hand. Just like Yahushua, he's going to put the sheep on the right hand, the ones that look after him, meaning the least of our brethren. And then put the goats on the left hand, the ones that's going to be rejected in the everlasting fire. I mean, hopefully this thing is starting to look the same across multiple books. Let's keep looking. And Jacob took him rides of green poplar and of the hazel uh -huh. and chestnut tree and piled white stakes, stakes in them and made the white appear which was in the rods. Mm -hmm. And what did they have to, well, I wonder what the animals had to do with their rods. And he set the rods which he had piled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. Uh-huh. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle rain sank, speckled and spotted. Mmm. Look at that. So Laban gave him all perfect animals. Because Laban knew any animal that was clean and perfect, that's Laban's. 
That thing mine. So I'm just going to remove anything that can have a defect. Because that way, when they have babies, you got to take one perfect animal and another perfect animal. They going to have a perfect baby. Right? Yeah, anybody know anybody that breed dogs? You know what I'm saying? Some people, they breed dogs. They look like, no, nah, that thing can't sleep with my dog. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we good on that. You know what I'm saying? They want to make sure that's a thoroughbred dog. Because when they put these dogs together, they know it's going to bring another thoroughbred. You get to bring some mud, some mixed breed in there. That's when the dog got all them issues, be having cancer, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. Because you mix some stuff up, they ain't supposed to be in there. Them dudes that breed dog, they serious. They make sure it's like, okay, who's your dog? Mama, daddy. And they trace that thing all the way back because they want to make sure that it's thoroughbred. You know what I'm saying? Them things, them things they breed them real nice and it's pure. You know what I'm saying? So in the same way, Laban is like, only got pure animals here. So when they, when they things have babies, that's mine. Because if you want anything that came out of you, that's me. So what what Jacob did is he set up a rod. You know what I'm saying? And he had a rod. You know what I'm saying? He set up some stuff around the rod. And every time that one of them pure animals had a baby underneath that rod, for some reason it came out speckled and spotted. Alright? So what do you think is going to end up happening over time? Let's see. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring shank, ring st start, what did I say? Ring straked, speckled and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces he's, of the he's, flocks. He separated what? The lambs. What's another word for lamb? Uh, sheep. He separated the sheep and then did what? And set the faces of the flocks toward the rain strength mm -hmm. and all the brown in the flock of Laban. Mm -hmm. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. Mm. So the ones that pass under the rock, guess what? That's Laban's. Everything else is rejected. All right, keep going. And it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the, gar in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So not feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. So when he had some strong, I mean all the animals were nice and perfect. But when they were buff and strong, he said, oh yeah, y'all go ahead and do this under the rod. That when they had that nice strong baby, it's ring straight. You know what I'm saying? That, that thing going to be speckled. Oh, that's mine. Then you start separating. Okay, these lambs is mine. All of it over there is his. Good. The one that was weak. I don't know. We don't do nothing under my darn rod. You all do that on their own. They have them nice, perfect, clean looking animals. But they darn weak. They separate. Okay, this is mine. That's Laban's. Keep going. Watch this. And the man increased exceedingly, mm. and had much cattle, and maid servants, and men servants, and camels, and donkeys. Mm. Yeah, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. Yeah. You look at it because of that. He made it out, right? Let's go back to Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter twenty, verse thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. This is Ezekiel chapter twenty, verse thirty-seven. Watch what the book says. So it's just important that we understand context and we know what all this stuff means. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Mm. And I will bring you what do you think he's talking about when he's saying pass under this rod? And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. He's trying to bring us into the bond of the covenant. He's trying to make sure that we ring straight. Right? Oh, you think you pretty, you good? Oh, okay. Yeah, you go do your thing over there then. He said he's going to bring us under the bond of the covenant. What up? And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. That's right. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, so they shall not enter into the land of Israel. That's what I was looking for. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. He said, I'm going to bring forth the rebels from where? Out of the country where they sojourn. He said, even the rebels are going to get brought out of the country. Right? All the places that we got scattered. We got scattered to Brazil. We got scattered to Cuba. We got scattered to Haiti. We got scattered to Jamaica. We got scattered to all these different Barbados. Right? All these different places we got scattered. All through the south. All up the north. We got scattered to Europe. We got scattered to Afghanistan. We got scattered uh, all the way over into uh, all the way over into uh, uh, the Philippines. 
You know what I'm saying? All over the world, the places that we got scattered, Australia, right? All these places that we got scattered, right? He said, I'm bringing y'all butts back. I'm going to make the ones that serve me pass under the bond of the rock. And all the other ones, oh, your butt being brought back too, right into the wilderness. And you're going to get rejected right there in the room. Keep watching. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, ye, uh -huh. ye serve, ye obey, ye, ye serve, ye every one of his idols, and hereafter also, if you will not hearken unto me. He said, go ahead and serve your idols if you're not going to pay attention to what I'm talking about. But pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. He said, I don't want nothing from you, reject it. Right? Grab Deuteronomy, let's go back to Deuteronomy, where were we? It's Deuteronomy chapter what? Chapter 30, verse what? It's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5. Let's see if we can try to bring this thing full circle. Uh, he said, no more will it be said, the Lord lives that brought it, the children of Israel out of Egypt, but the Lord lives that brought the children of Israel out of every country that they were scattered. You know what I'm talking about? He said, I'll do work. What you talking about? Easy money. Easy money. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land. Over. Five, verse five. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse five. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Uh -huh. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou may live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and upon them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Mm -hmm. and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Uh -huh. and, the Lord thy, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. For this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee. He said it's it not off. hidden and it's not far off. He said what I'm commanding you here is not hidden and it's not far off. Tell us more about it. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's hear more about how this commandment is accessible. That's what he's trying to tell us. He said, oh, you ain't got no excuses about this commandment that I'm giving you right now. Let's hear about it. It is not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. He said, you ain't trying to get this from heaven. It's right here. Right? He said, the commandment, it was brought to you. It's right here. What else about it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Mm. He said, that thing ain't beyond the sea and in the deeps of the water where somebody got to do some deep diving to get to it and try to get to the pit of earth just to find it. He said, no, nah, that thing's right here, accessible. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thine heart and thou, said, that thou may do it. What? In thy mouth and in thy heart mm. that thou may do it. Grab Romans for me. Romans chapter 10 and probably on verse 5, verse 4. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Four. Now let's just start at verse one. This is Romans chapter ten, verse one. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. What does that mean? They on fire for God. They want to know, him, but they don't know who he is. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the information. They don't understand the scripture. That's where we are. That's where we are. Got to pay attention to what the word telling us. That's what we are. A lot of people on fire. A lot of people excited. A lot of people passionate. All right? All those things are very important. There's one thing that we're missing. Proper information. A lot of people just plain old foolish. Just don't have the information. Don't make wise decisions. Don't study. All right? Don't pay attention. All right? All they do is just make darn noise and bigger and fight. At the end of the day, who's going to get down and do the work in the book? It's 
one thing to be on fire. It's one thing to be excited. It's one thing to be passionate. It's another thing to have the knowledge and be able to operate properly. All right? Keep going. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What was that talking about? Pharisees. Talking about Christians. That too. I ain't talking about Christians. Christians, they have a zeal for God. These Christians be serious. They stand out. They stand out 20 darn hours on the street trying to tell people, you know what I'm saying, like, come to Jesus. Right? He'll say, yeah, they stand out there. They stand out there a long time. There's a lot of stuff these Christians have done and been passionate. They had crusades where they had just killing Muslims and black people, killing us to darn death, all in the name of their Jesus. Right? These are some passionate darn people. Right? Even us, when they converted us to Christianity and, 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 and confused our darn minds. Right? In the name of their darn Jesus, we did some wild stuff. We do wild stuff now in the name of their Jesus. Right? We be shaking, dancing, wigs falling off in church. Y'all see that video of the lady, you know what I'm saying? The lady, she, you know what I'm saying? The pastor, like, praying for her. And she go like this, and she falls out like that, and her wig fall off. And one of the, like, the women usher try to slide up behind her and get her wig and put it back on. That thing kept on falling off. Oh, that's up. That thing is up. The minds. You got the mind. All this, I mean, all this wild stuff that we be doing. I mean, we are clearly passionate about God, but we don't have the information. We don't know what we darn doing. None of it lines up with the book. Nothing that we do lines up with the darn book. Yet, we do it all in the name of God. Supposedly. Right? Then at the end of it, he said, in their ignorance, they have said, now let's be clear, ignorance is not like you stupid, necessarily. Ignorance is just saying, you don't know. In them not knowing, because they don't know, they establish righteousness on their own. So what do you think it means? That the Bible is saying you have to turn away from sin, and if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. But we, as ignorant Christians, said no matter what you do, you can't make God love you any more or less, right? And he has already died for your sins. You were saved before you could even think about it. That's what they teach us. So by doing that now, and by saying that the Lord's Prayer, and by saying the sinner's prayer that they came up with, you are now saved. Just come to the front of the church, sit down. You say, repeat after me. You are now saved. By doing that in ignorance, what they've done is they've established their own righteousness outside of God. It's self-righteous. They don't see it that way because you know what they see as self-righteous? Saying, I can do everything on my own. That's what they think self-righteousness is. Self-righteousness is anytime you establish righteousness outside of what God prescribed. Right? So if I say I'm saved and I'm not saved, that's self-righteousness. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Mm -hmm. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law that the man which does those things shall live by them. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. Mm. That is to bring Christ down from above. All right, this is what Moses is out there telling us in the law. Stop saying your dead, dead relatives in heaven. All right, keep going. And who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring the Messiah again from the dead. Mm -hmm. But what saith it? The word is nigh, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Right? So Moses, when he is talking, he is like, don't worry about it. And I'm telling you, that thing not to you. He is talking about the word of faith. Which Paul preached. No, no. Right? Let's hear more about this word of faith. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. If you confess, right? That you speckle, bring straight, whatever it is. Alright, keep going. The Lord Yahweh.
Yahushua. He got to be the Lord Yahushua. You can't, I mean, you can't, you can't yeah. just be called the yeah. Lord. He said, why, why do you call me Lord and yeah. do not what I say? Alright, so he got to be Lord. He got to be the master. You got to do what the man said. Keep going. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Okay. Thou shalt be saved. That's it. I got that. You want to be saved? Obey the man. Make sure he's Lord over your darn life. Right? Confess your darn sins. And believe that the man died for your darn sin. No. Ain't that difficult, right? You know the part they miss? That Lord part. They ain't say Lord. They ain't gonna live. Alright? Keep going. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. He said with the heart a man believes unto righteousness. Alright, so any sin that comes from us, it comes from where? The heart. So if our heart is sinful, do we believe unto righteousness? No. Is sin the opposite of righteousness? Absolutely. So how can we believe unto righteousness from the heart if our heart is also producing sin? It's impossible. Can't do it. Who told us that? Uh, first John. First John will tell us that. Yeah, well, she would tell us that too. What about James? Gotcha. All right, James tells us you can't have you can't have salt water and fresh water coming out of the same spring. What happens if you got salt water and fresh water coming out of the same spring? What kind of water is that? Salt water. What do you say in uh, Habakkuk? You can touch something with a garden or something like that. Habakkuk, uh, Haggai, right? Haggai. That was Haggai, right? Haggai said, Haggai said, yeah, let's talk about Haggai. That's Haggai chapter two. This Haggai chapter 2, we're just going to do a little bit of talking and get up out of here. This Haggai chapter 2, what verse I'm looking for? I want to say maybe verse, I don't know why I want to say verse 10. It's probably verse 9. This Haggai chapter 2, let's try verse 9. Y'all got to understand the character of the Most High God. A lot of people just out here winging it. You know what I'm saying? They tell, they tell y'all darn anything about God. They like, oh yeah, well, well God is this and God is that. Now nah, you need to stop all that lie and tell the open up the book and tell these people the truth. And if you don't know, then just say you don't know. It ain't bad, I don't know. A lot of times I'll be like, I don't know, I can't speak on that. A lot of times people smoke a cigarette, a lot of people want me to take smoke a cigarette and sin. They man, they come to me. Tell these people smoke a cigarette and sin. Listen, I ain't gonna speak on I can't speak on that. I I can't point to a Bible verse and say smoking cigarettes is sin, or to suggest that the post smoking cigarettes is sin. I would say I would advise not to do it. I ain't going to tell you you're going to hell for it. I don't, I don't give enough credit. They always talk about I tell people they go to hell. There's a whole lot of stuff I don't tell people they're going to hell for. There's a lot of people out here that tell you you're going to hell for some crazy stuff. I don't tell people they're going to hell for everything. Just what's in the book. I tell you, but you want to write to hell what's in the book. That thing in the book. I feel justified that thing in the book. I'm like, mm, I ain't saying anything. I'm just repeating it. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you get to talking outside of what the book say. That's when you get in the dangerous ground. You know what I'm saying? Because now you got to be like, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm using my judgment, and I don't know if my judgment is there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm qualified. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I did the work. I don't remember dying on no cross. You know what I'm saying? I don't remember living a righteous life. I don't know if my judgment is appropriate. I don't know if the man looking for I don't know. I don't know if God up there looking for it. Whoa, whoa, wait. Let me hear what Philip thing. I don't know about that. I, I just never got that message. You know what I'm saying? I can go away and talk about what the man said. I can, go, I can go based off of what the bottom of the book says. The bottom of the book say it's written to him. When it's written to him, I can trust that. This Haggai chapter 2, give me verse 9. Give me verse 10. This Haggai chapter 2, verse 10. What does the book say? In the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law. Uh huh. He said, ask the priest concerning the law, the foundation of what we're doing here. Ask them. Let's hear about it. If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment. If I got holy meat, right? I mean, I'm holding on to it. I got a whole bunch of meat, right? And I'm carrying it in my shirt because it's so much meat, right? And this is holy meat. It's not regular meat. This is holy meat. It's already been sanctified and blessed, right? And I'm a priest, so I'm clean and I'm sanctified. I'm blessed. And I'm holding it in my shirt and I'm walking around here and I'm about to go put it on the table. This sanctified meat is holy and it's fresh. So whatever, whatever. And with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat. Uh huh. Shall it be holy? He said, but this holy meat with my with my with my shirt, I ended up sliding up against 
is something that's not holy. He asked the question, now is it holy? And the priest answered and said, no. That guy got done. He said, listen, I'm clean. I'm, I'm clean, shirt clean, meat clean, right? Everything clean. I'm sliding through in a hurry, trying to get it over to the, you know, to the priest. That bump against some other food that was unclean. What does that make the food I'm dealing with? Unclean. We don't understand that concept. You are right, you at a restaurant? Cause they, you know when it's in the Bible, people be like, oh, well, that's just wow, that's mystical. Okay, you at a restaurant? He bringing out your food, right? He bringing out your food, and you see this. I mean, you just see a dirty. We gonna say white man. We gonna say a dirty man, right? And then he bring, you know, they bring it out like that, and they swing that thing down around. You know, you be in a tight restaurant. We just went to what restaurant we go to? Olive Garden. We went to Olive Garden. That thing has some space in that thing. You know what I'm saying? It's been a while. Usually you go to restaurants and it'd be a busy night, and they got you like right up next to people. You can't even bring your seat out too far. You know what I'm saying? So you got, you know, what I'm saying? you in one of them restaurants. You can't really put your seat out too far. Y'all all kind of cramped in there, tables next to each other, and then he go like that. You know how fancy they are. He go like that, bring that thing around like that. And this man, while he's doing that, is taking a bite of food. That thing touches darn elbow, and you see it. You see it the whole time. That's a beautiful darn steak. And you see that thing just kind of glide against his elbow. That man ain't bud. He just kept on darn eating. But you know that's a dirty darn man. You looking at him like that. And you saw that steak take him. How many of y'all are you going to take? to be like, oh, I appreciate that steak and start eating. You know too? No, you might want to switch that out. But uh, yeah, right, what if you had a waiter, right? And they come. And they come and they, they get to talking and they like spitting over the food on accident. How many of y'all just gonna be like, yeah, yeah, that's the one I want. Go ahead and cut that. No, you can be like, no, nah, go ahead and switch that out for me. The concept is the same. Most of God said this is sanctified and clean. That's unclean. If something unclean takes something clean, that got that's done. He asked the priest. Let's hear about it. Let's see, let's see. I mean, let's see if it's other, it worked the other way around. Then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. So if I'm unclean because of a dead body, and then I touch that meat, or even the other food that was already unclean, does it make what I touch unclean? Yes. Alright, let's bring it to, you know what I'm saying, bring it to our world. Somebody will use the bathroom. They go use the bathroom. You know they dirty but didn't wash their darn hands. You was in the bathroom. You ever been in the bathroom with somebody? They talking to you. You know what I'm saying? You just be talking, oh, man, I'll be at work. Like, yeah, man, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. You know, you use the bathroom. I don't do too much like talking in the bathroom, first of all. You know what I'm saying? So you try to make that conversation real quick. Like, yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah, all right, man. Yeah, yeah, all right. They keep dragging that thing on. Then you go, and it's all right, man, I'll see you later. Y'all go next off, next off, next to each other. You know what I'm saying? You get done, you step away, you head towards the sink. He like, all right, man, I'll see you out. And he just start walking towards the darn door. Dude, you look at that thing like, it was a nasty. All right, so you wash your hands, and then you get out on the floor, right? And then they turn, they got a potluck. And he go dip his darn hands in the darn potluck. You eating the food out there? You be like, oh, I'm happy I got that already. I don't need no sex. We good. Right? You look at it because the man was unclean. You touch something, his germs, is that going to make his germs? I mean, is it, is it going to put his germs on, on what's on there? Like whatever he touched? Yeah. It's no different from the book. Most like God, it ain't illogical. It ain't nothing mystical going on here. It's common sense. It's what any germaphobe would think. Most like God is a germaphobe. You know what I'm saying? He don't play around with this stuff. He looking like that's nasty. That's why he told y'all. He said, man, look, if anybody needs to go take a number two in the camp, you take your butt on the outer outskirts of the camp, and you bring a paddle with you. And after you do your business, I want you to scoop it up and turn the dirt over on it. He said, because I, the most I got, I'm walking in the midst of y'all. This thing got to be clean. He's a germaphobe. If you don't know that about God, that means ain't nobody talk to you about God. Most I got is a germaphobe. He don't play that stuff. He don't want nothing messed up, nothing unclean. No, mm -mm. they ain't going to be right up and down. All right, keep going. Then as in Haggai and said, so is this people and so is this nation before me, says the Lord. He said, just like that, just like y'all. Y'all darn dirty. 
y'all are mixed. You have you have unclean with clean, yeah. which makes all of it unclean. Right? The same way with our hearts. If we have sin in our hearts, lust in our hearts, and it's coming from our hearts. You know how we know it's coming from our hearts? Because we did it. If I get the cussing, I get the lying, I get the stealing, I get the cheating, I get to doing whatever it is, whatever sin that a person chews out. If I do it, it ain't because it just happened. That's how a lot of people want. I mean, it just happened. No, it came from your heart. From the treasures of the heart does a man speak or does a man do. Right? So if it came from my heart, how can I then say I'm believing on God unto righteousness from that same heart? You can't. Because now it's unclean. Right? You have to understand the basic concept. People can read Romans 10 and Christians as sin. I mean, they just sin in their darn life away. And they'll read that thing with all confidence like this is telling me I'm going into the kingdom. This is telling me, they ain't going to say kingdom. This is telling me I'm going to heaven. They'll read that thing with all confidence and think they're going right to darn heaven. Only because all the words in there, they don't have a knowledge of them. They don't have a knowledge of what from the heart believing unto righteousness. They don't know what that means. They don't know what that looks like. No, who's taught it to them? Is it their fault? Kind of. Who's taught it to them? Who's out here teaching the book? Nobody. Everybody winging it. Everybody improvising. Everybody just trying to make you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? This is what I think it means. This is what I think it means. Why don't you stop thinking and just go back to the book? And if you don't know, shut up. I don't know yet. I have to look into that. Those phrases are okay. Not everybody has to be an expert. You don't have to know everything. I don't know everything. And I don't pretend like I know everything. I will tell you, though, I know what I know. And I ain't fooling around with none of the stuff I do know about. That's crazy. That don't make no darn sense. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30. Where we leave off? 14. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14. How many verses we got left in 30? Probably just a couple, right? This whole thing, man. It's, it's a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of stuff that's, that's in it. It's a lot of forces in the world. Right? It's a lot of forces that's going to try to keep us from, from reading the book and understanding the book. Alright? So, when we are kept from reading the book and understanding the book, somebody who sounds like they know what they're talking about, they can tell us whatever they darn want. They be like, oh, no, nah, this is what God really means. You ain't never darn read it, and you know you ain't going to read it. So you going whatever sound good to you. There's no different from these people. No, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. All that means is I'm going whatever feel good to me. We got to get out of that stuff, man. We got to get on something solid. Most of God ain't never been no winged type of God. That thing got to be structured. Keep going. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, is verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee, mm -hmm. into thy mouth, and into thy heart, that thou may do it. Mm -hmm. See, I have set before thee this day of life and good and death and evil. He and said before us, right hand, life and good, left hand, death and evil. Which one do we choose? In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou may live and multiply. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God shall bless thee in the land where you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Mm -hmm. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou possess over Jordan to go possess it. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. He said, therefore choose what? Choose life. Therefore choose what? Life. Therefore choose what? Life. Gotta choose. We got the opportunity right here. He said he said it before. It's still set before. Nothing changed. That thing only feels tough that we used to sin. It. It's a no-brainer, though. You gotta choose life. Keep going. That both you and your seed may live. 
that you may love the Lord thy God, and that you may obey his voice, and that you may cleave unto him. Mm -hmm. For he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. That's it? Yeah. Good. Any questions?